Hello and welcome back to the channel. Well, things are not looking too rosy for Disney. And uh, does this spell doom for the company? Disney CEO Bob Chapek confirms company undertaking massive cost-cutting measures in the wake of poor Q4 financial report. This, to me, translates into layoffs but let's get into what the article says this article coming to us courtesy of bounding in the comics after months of denying the realities of living in a recession entertainment giant walt disney company is expected to make massive layoffs due to their poor financial outlook yeah you knew it was going to happen everybody can afford to be wasteful and um have questionable products and make movies that are preachy when it's the best of times. But when it's the worst of times, suddenly uh, you got to start buckling down and you got to be a little more fiscally responsible. And maybe you need to cut the woke messaging and just give the fans what they want. But let's get into this article as per a memo sent to company execs last friday and subsequently viewed by variety the house of mouse will begin taking substantial measures to offset the company's recent and abysmal q4 financial losses well, while certain macroeconomic factors are out of our control meeting these goals requires all of us to continue doing our part to manage the things we can control like expenses most notably our costs see you all will have critical roles to play in this effort, and as senior leaders, I know you will get it done. To accomplish these goals, the CEO announced that he had established a cost structure task force of executive officers. Along with me, this team will make the critical big picture decisions necessary to achieve our objections. Yes, he assembled a cost structure task force of Bob's to handle the upcoming layoffs. I'm Bob Slidell. This is my associate, Bob Porter. Oh, hi, Bob. Bob, good luck with your layoffs, all right? I hope your firings go really well. The measures set to be undertaken by this task force include a rigorous review of the company's content, oh, and marketing spending, working with our content leaders and their teams. That's interesting that the first thing you said was we're going to be looking at our content. We're going to be, what are they going to be looking at with regards to their content? Maybe they're going to be looking at whether or not it brings joy because a lot of what they've been doing lately does not bring joy to the people who are, well, supposed to be watching it. Which, of course, does beg the question, who the fuck are they making this shit for? Additionally, they seek to ensure their investments are both efficient and come with tangible benefits to both audiences and the company. Now, notice the order of that. Notice that... Tangible benefits means um, things like money. So he's talking about benefits for the audience as well as benefits for the company. And notice that they mentioned audience first, right? Not the company first. They mentioned the audience first. That's exactly what they need to do. They need to prioritize the audience and make sure that the audience is happy because that's the only way the company will end up with those tangible benefits. A limiting of headcount additions through a targeted hiring freeze and reviewing our SGNA costs. So again, they're not going to be adding people. Wouldn't make sense to add people at this time, especially when they're getting ready to go through layoffs. As we work through this uh, selling general and administrative expenses, so that's what the SGNA stands for. As we work through the SGNA expense evaluation process, we will look at every avenue of operations and labor to find savings. Okay, so they're going to be looking to operations and labor to find savings. Again, this means layoffs. And we do anticipate some staff reductions as a part of this review. So I'm, again, no surprise there that this has to, this has to be done. In the immediate term, business travel should now be limited to essential trips only. It's kind of obvious. The first thing they do is cut back on travel. I am fully aware this will be a difficult process for many of you and your teams, meaning... Yeah, it's going to be tough and stressful because people are going to know that they're getting ready to be laid off. We're going to have to make tough and comfortable decisions about who we lay off. But that is just what leadership requires. We require layoffs. And I thank you in advance for stepping up during this important time of layoffs. Our company has weathered many challenges during our 100-year history, and I have no doubt 
we will achieve our layoffs and create a more nimble company better suited to the environment of tomorrow. Now, the big question is, who are they going to lay off? And are they going to lay off a lot of these woke wackos who have been helping to drive Disney into such dismal financial trouble? Many believe that this review could affect Disney's tendency to give massive production budgets, though, to productions pertaining to such properties as Star Wars and Marvel. Yeah, I would expect that to happen. Although, I mean, in the end, I think they're going to require that they things be a little more lean and uh, maybe uh, some more practical things. And, you know, yeah, try to manage and shave these budgets down a little bit. And here is why. This year, production spending for the Marvel Cinematic Universe hit an all-time high. With both Thor, Love and Thunder, as well as Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, hitting the $250 million cost mark before marketing. The highest such budgets for any non-Avengers films in the entire franchise. The massive costs of these films have driven Marvel Studios' average break-even mark for those films to an estimated $700 to $800 million. Now let's just make it easy and call it $750 million. But while Disney had a much better year at the box office compared to 2021, none of the three Marvel Cinematic Universe releases for 2022 managed to hit a billion dollars worldwide. Further, the news of Disney's upcoming cost-cutting measures comes immediately after the company posted its very poor quarterly, quarterly earnings results for Q4 of 2022. And now I want to remind you of some of those recent movie releases like Thor, Love and Thunder, which only did $750 million worldwide, meaning this thing broke even, that's it. And Multiverse of Madness, which made $950 million at the worldwide box office, meaning at best it made a couple hundred million dollars. As we've seen, Black Panther Wakanda Forever had a an opening box office weekend that matched Multiverse of Madness. So... So perhaps if Black Panther Wakanda Forever does as well as Multiverse of Madness, maybe it makes about $950 million. But if that's the case, then it will only make $200 million in profit. Yeah, it's certainly not the days where they spent $200 million and made $1.2 or $1.1 billion. Uh, yeah, those days seem to be over. Unless your name is Spider-Man. That seems to be the only movies that still earn in these uh, in excess of a billion dollars. And of course, those are 100% Disney films. In fact, yeah, that's also a topic for another video, but Disney doesn't pull in a lot of money on the Spider-Man films because they only get a portion of the profits. Even if it makes a billion dollars on a $200 million budget, they don't end up getting most of that profit. Most of that profit ends up going to Sony. So it looks like tough times ahead for the House of Mouse. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, I think there's going to be massive layoffs. I'm hoping that these layoffs will trim some of the troublemakers out of the general population of the employees at Disney. But we shall see if they're smart. If Bob's smart, then he'll make sure that those people get cut because honestly, they're more trouble than they're worth. But if he doesn't, then yeah, Disney may remain unprofitable for a long time to come. So we shall see. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In the meantime, if you want to continue to support the channel, then please click the like, share, and subscribe buttons. We're currently pushing for 1,000 subscribers, and we just crossed the 800 subscriber mark. So let's keep pushing and make 900 subscribers next. That's all I have for now, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.